who is an environmental migrant or the question what is environmental migration or environmentally induced migration or environmental displacement is the one million dollar question. There is a significant body of research now attempting to frame and define the process and investigate it in details. But there is no clear cut to it. There is no single definition for it. It's a complex process that still needs a lot more research to it. And the reason for that is that we're finding that the environment by itself cannot be the sole driver for environment for, for population movement in general. There are other governance issues that have to overlap or juxtapose with that. Uh, the management of ecosystem services, biodiversity, adaptive capacity of the population in place. All of these determine whether people move or not. The decision to move itself is a very complex one as well. There are trade-offs in that. In, in classic migration theory, pull and push factors, once you start adding environmental factors to that, makes it also more complex. It's not a process that is a sudden onset one. The environmental degradation in most cases is a creeping process. It's a gradual, slow one. People's adaptive capacity could be adequate at the beginning, but if the processes and the magnitude of these processes overwhelm this adaptive capacity and erodes livelihoods, for example, then movement could become one of the options that are that are open to people. There's also the issue of migration in general currently being in the public discourse and how it has stigmatized migrants, the politicization of it, and uh, uh, dealing with it almost like a security issue, the securitization of migration has, has created a lot of misconceptions and a lot of misunderstandings among the public of who are these people. That drawing a clear line between what's an environmental migrant and what's an economic migrant, for example, that, that's a very, very difficult question. Uh, to answer, and I don't, I don't personally think that there is one or the other. So, in terms of academic research, there is still a lot more empirical work that needs to be done. Quite of what's out there is is adequate, but there are some problems with the scale on which it is done, where it was done. It's it's a highly contextual issues. The uh, processes of environmental change and environmental degradation in one location is not identical to another. Adaptive capacity of people in one place is not the same as the other. The decision-making process that individuals or communities in general tend to take to mitigate against or limit the effect of environmental degradation it is also very different from one location to another. Uh, what is also important to note is that migration is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we haven't seen yet mass exodus of entire communities and places completely abandoned, becoming ghost towns or, or ghost villages. Migration is still an adaptive capacity. It's still a coping mechanism. And there is enough work done on remittances what migrants send back home and what that is used to. Now, the question is whether it's used to, for goods and services on an individual or household level, or is it channeled for collective adaptive capacity or collective community services is yet to be, to be known. Uh, there's a big question mark on whether migration is a sign of failure, a last resort, that people, there is no, there's, there's nothing else to do but to pick up and leave, or is it a form of adaptation? So the, the jury is still out on that, and uh, if I were to sum up, the, there are three reasons why we still need a lot of research and a lot more empirical work on environmentally induced migration. One, it's a complex process that still needs more work to be done. Some of it is adequate so far. Uh, Two, it's in the public discourse, and it's a highly politically sensitive issue that needs a lot more understanding. Three, which is the, what I haven't mentioned yet, is that they, they, there are no adequate legal frameworks of protection for these people. 
they don't qualify as refugees or even IDPs. The, there is a very uh, specific and clear definition of who is a refugee in the Refugee Convention. Uh, the environment legally is not a persecutor, cannot be deemed in legal terms as a persecutor. Um, there are some initiatives, but all are still in their infancy, like the Nancy Initiative, for example. But there are no adequate legal frameworks of protection for people who are displaced because of environmental degradation. So these three put together uh, will still be with us for quite some time. Um, there is work going on, but there's still more to be done.